Rohit Sharma and Virat Kohli are back in India's T20I side. They will of course play the three T20I series against Afghanistan. Rohit Sharma will be captain and presumably you will see Virat Kohli at number three in those three T20Is. But is it a step backward for Indian cricket? Rohit Sharma has been named captain of the Indian team for the three T20Is against Afghanistan. Virat Kohli will of course, like I said, you will see him bat at number three. But this team also has youngsters like Yashashvi Jaiswal, Rinku Singh, Jitesh Sharma, you'll see a lot of those explosive batters who've made a name for themselves in the Indian Premier League. Why then go back to Rohit Sharma? According to reports in the media, both Rohit and Kohli were eager to play the T20 World Cup, which is scheduled to be played later this year in the United States of America. Of course, these two are legends, aren't they? Kohli and Rohit, they are the two top leading run scorers in T20 internationals. Virat Kohli, the only man to have scored over 4,000 runs in T20Is. Rohit Sharma has 400s in the shortest format in international cricket. Why would then anyone grudge their inclusion in the T20 series against the Afghanistan team? Well, some quick reminder here. In 2022, Rohit Sharma had played 29 T20 internationals. Poor average and not a healthy strike rate. And he really struggled in that T20 World Cup in Australia. Virat Kohli, of course, played a knock for the ages. That majestic 80 to not out against Pakistan helped India snatch victory from the jaws of defeat at the Melbourne Cricket Ground. Everybody still talks about that Kohli knock and it will be talked about for years and years to come. But in that same tournament, in the semi-final against England, the eventual world champions that year, India were timid with the bat. Virat Kohli scored a half century, but he was criticized for his lack of intent. There was Kale Rahul, of course, again criticized for his lack of intent. After the T20 World Cup in 2022, India decided to move on and try some of their younger players who have done so well in the IPL. Jitesh Sharma has been explosive. Yashashwi Jaspal has been extremely consistent Shubman Gill has, of course, been a backbone for the Gujarat Titans over the last two editions. Why then did the Indian selectors go back to Rohit? Is it really a last chance for Rohit there? Remember, just a few weeks back, Rohit lost the Mumbai Indians captaincy. Hardik Pandya, who was transferred from the Gujarat Titans, was uh, handed the honour. He will lead Mumbai Indians in the 2024 IPL. Rohit Sharma, of course, uh, like I said, he wasn't very impressive in the 2022 calendar year. But over the last two or three years, Rohit has really, really tried to up the ante with his game, especially as an opener. In the 2023 ODI World Cup, Rohit was sensational. He scored nearly 600 runs. He was the second highest run scorer in the World Cup and at a breathtaking strike rate of 125. Rohit threw caution to the wind and decided to take on some of the world's best fast bowlers. Virat Kohli, of course, had a record-breaking World Cup as well. Well over 760 runs. He scored hundreds. He became the first cricketer to score 50 ODI hundreds. He's in blistering form. Now, in stark contrast to Rohit's 2022, Virat Kohli scored his maiden T20 100 in 2022. He scored 781 runs in the shortest format. And in the IPL, a few months before that, he was sensational. Is Virat Kohli then getting back into the groove for the T20 format? Look, I have for long argued that there is little scope to have three anchors, which was Rohit, Virat and KL Rahul. Now, if Rohit has revitalized his game, in the ODI format, does he deserve a chance in the T20 format? Forget his numbers in 2022. He's obviously had an outstanding record in T20Is. Virat Kohli, magician with the bat. But in an era when most batters prefer strike rates, high strike rates over high averages, have India messed it up a little bit? Remember, these are the only three T20Is India get to play before the World Cup. Of course, there's the IPL. They can make a lot out of it. There'll be a lot of match practice. Shubman Gill and Hardik Pandya 
out nursing injuries will hopefully be back for Mumbai Indians this season, this summer and they'll get to showcase their magic again. Will Surya Kumar Yadav be captain once he's back and he's fit and he's ready to go? Will Hardik Pandya be captain? Well, you know, that sort of has been taken out of the equation because if Rohit is in the side, obviously he's leading. And because he's in the side for the Afghanistan series, you know the selectors are considering him for the World Cup. Virat Kohli, like I said, again, he's been in terrific form over the last couple of years. He's shrugged off some poor run prior to that and he looks like he's set again. But their strike rate in the middle overs of a T20 game that has been a little concerning. Even in the IPL, even in the last edition of the IPL, Virat Kohli scored a lot of runs. But sometimes he took a little bit of time in the middle. Rohit Sharma has, of course, not had a great IPL for years and years now. And you're looking at guys like Yashashvi Jaiswal, outstanding form. Shubman Gill, of course, he's kind of withered away. But is it also a case to see whether Jaiswal and Gill can set up the pace at the top. Then you have someone like Surya Kumar Yadav. Then you have the likes of Rinku Singh and Jitesh Sharma to really bring in that firepower. How does the inclusion of Rohit Sharma and Virat Kohli then place India in a year of the T20 World Cup? I think it's a dangerous step. I think it's just too risky. So Virat Kohli, yes. Rohit Sharma, not so sure. Is he being rewarded for a fantastic run at the ODI World Cup? Is he being rewarded for being so selfless in the ODI format over the last three years? Maybe. Do India not see a better leader yet than Rohit Sharma? Well, that's some food for thought, isn't it? Thank you so much. And do subscribe to Inside Sport. Do follow Inside Sport for a lot more cricket analysis. Features, stats, stay tuned.